because for which you know they have been brought under this ministry can be realized and better achieved so if you observe lately i've been very quiet and i'll be less you know i've spoken about issues that are apparent because my objective is actually bring it to a place where without without any kind of you know intervention you are able to design and know that this is appropriate this is not appropriate the bible says that those by the reason of use as exercise their senses to design between evil and good that is we can be trained to a point that spiritually and by spiritual maturity you know that this is appropriate this is good though this is good this is not the appropriate time by discernment by growth all of these things comes by growth and by maturity so i want to start this morning by looking at stages in spiritual growth and this morning i'll be looking at three stages of spiritual growth the babyhood stage the childhood stage the adulthood or manhood stage just like you have it in the circle of nature so we can have a parallel you know uh, um, uh, model also in the cycle of the spirit babyhood is a starting point for everybody who is born again when you get born again into christ you are born anew corinthians says if any man is in christ is what a new creature so everyone that confesses christ is given the spirit of god and is born no matter how old or highly placed physically that person is you can be 70 year old and still be a baby in christ yet you can be five year old and yet be a child you can be 10 and you are already maturing as you ought to so babyhood is a starting point for everyone that is in christ the church often make mistakes of immediately you know treating spiritual babies like adults uh, and this always comes with grave consequences you know most times and it happens you know uh, in a whole lot of these evangelical churches and cycle you see an occultic person that got born again from babalawo to christian the next thing you make the person is an evangelist Abby, and the person will now be carrying from crusade to crusade trying to preach and teach to people what will the person teach and that's why some of them will be giving you revelations that are spurious and that even further confuse the face of many and they'll be mixing their occultic experience with what they have not learned about god and be projecting it as a pattern of salvation as a pattern of the gospel no the mistake the church makes most of the time is that we give adult who status to somebody that's supposed to still sit down and learn you know the principles and the first oracles of the kingdom of god so what i'm saying is that any church we have and we experience consequences of treating a baby like an adult i'm sure this is my son standing before me there's no way i love him so much that will give him my khaki to drive and bring me to church why because he's still what he cannot undo that so anyone that we relate with a baby in christ as a spiritually matured personality we are suffer great consequences so the way to grow out of babyhood is to desire first peter chapter 2 verse 2 says desire the sincere make of the word of god so that you can grow thereby it is not a bad thing to be a baby abby is all of us celebrate babies abby and any parent that does not you know that had delay in childbirth they feel sad that they don't have babies so babyhood is not a bad thing but it is important that a baby grows out of babyhood so that he can attain to the reality of his assistant and essence of life the way out of babyhood is desire desire hunger seeking after and pursuing the sincere meek the undiluted unadulterated word of god that is how to grow out of babyhood you must have this desire to grow you must add this hunger to be fed you must add this passion and the reason why most of us are not growing anymore 
is because we have stopped desiring the word of God. We have lost our appetite. As much as loss of appetite is injurious to physical framework of a man, so also loss of spiritual appetites is danger to any man, to any spirit. There is always an inscription that I used to read many years ago. Seven days makes one week, Abby. Seven days without the word of God and prayer makes one week. That is, you cannot go far and go too long without genuine hunger and thirst for the word of God without remaining a baby. If you will be matured spiritually, you must have a personal hunger for the word of God that is beyond Sunday morning ritual. Your private closet, your private space with God must have something personal of a form of engagement. This is a responsibility for everyone who wants to grow. So, how do we know a spiritual baby? How do you know a spiritual baby? Or how do you know that you are still a baby in the spirit? Number one is dependence. Dependence. Babies can't help themselves much. They are also, they are always dependent. They are easily dependent on other people to take care of them. This is normal. And spiritual parents and older brethren in the Lord needs to be responsible and understanding in this manner. Babies are dependent. And this form of dependence is not evil. It is just what it is because of the stage you are. As a spiritual baby, you will need somebody to ask spiritual information or to feed you the word of God. That is the essence of Sunday service Bible study on Friday and every opportunity to share the word of God. There must be regular time for babies to feed on the word. Just like there must be regular times for physical babies to be fed, you know, natural meals. So as a baby, you have this dependence on people you perceive more mature than you in Christ to teach you the word of God. You want to suck from them you want them to break down the word of god for you to understand you want them to you know break into small 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 more chops for you to understand and i will advise every baby that is here in the spirit to expose themselves to a devotional lifestyle and by getting devotional materials that can help you to you know eat the word of God in bit and in pieces. That's the essence of devotional guides. Not many of you can carry Bible like I do and read from Genesis to Revelation. Do you understand what I'm saying? Some of us need small, 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 small bits and pieces. One verse of scripture with little explanation per day. And one verse of scripture to lead us into prayer per day. All of us went through that circle. There was a time I was regulating my daily, you know, uh, relationship with God with devotional manuals, and there are a lot of them. Every day with Jesus was so beautiful for me at that time. Our daily bread was so beautiful. I'm not talking about daily man now. Because there are some devotional that are also dangerous for your consumption. But I would recommend devotionals. I hope the I'm not I'm online. Abby. Yeah, daily manna is not good. Let them come and arrest me. Because there are some dangerous teachings in those ones. But devotionals like our daily bread, every day with Jesus, even the word for today. Go to bookshops, buy one that has 365 days a year. Open it at regular times every morning. There is no way as a baby in Christ, you go to those devotionals that you will not know at least 365 scriptures in a year because there are memory verses in those scriptures. And there is one by Christian Union. I've forgotten that there are that one by Christian Union. It's also very good. Some weeks ago, I was cleaning my library and Sister Rita packed a chunk of them. You can ask her to give you one out of many she packed. Am I correct, Rita? She packed up to six or seven or eight or ten, even if I can't remember. 
there were things that I will help you to grow out of dependence and if it is your desire to grow you need to grow out of dependence number two trait of a baby is ignorance babies usually think anything is food and do not recognize danger ignorance is another trait of a baby when a baby you put a baby on the floor anything she picks on the floor he picks on the floor where does he take it mouth ignorance is an associated trait of a baby and ignorance is dangerous the bible says that my people perish for what for ignorance lack of knowledge it is not every pulpit you can eat from it is not every stream excuse me is there every, is there every water you can drink but a baby does not know that carry a water in a cup from a gutter and put it in front of a baby what will he do with it he will drink it so ignorance is a trait of the baby stage hence they need to be washed over so spiritual babies take poisons in form of wrong doctrines wrong teachings wrong examples unknowingly and unfortunately many babies have died as a result you will not perish for ignorance i cannot hear your amen, amen. so if you know you are in this stage of babyhood don't be proud subject yourself for oversight you know what i mean by oversight get an overseer to monitor your spiritual progress submit yourself to your pastor for training and for teaching don't be proud not to ask questions where things are gray and unfortunately many of us don't even have questions because we are not even feeding at all ignorance is dangerous number three trait of a baby is innocence innocence they are naive I may I say innocence is not an antidote for deception in fact innocence makes you more predisposed to be deceived did you understand that English I was training in Lagos during the week and somebody said your English is taught too much are you a pastor where are you coming from I said is it pastor that blow big, big English what I'm saying is that the innocent are more deceived than the one that has knowledge innocence is a trait of a baby you know first corinthians second corinthians chapter 5 verse 17 and first corinthians chapter 4 verse 20 made us to understand that spiritual babies usually think everybody because of their innocence is an angel everybody is sincere that's why they can easily be taken advantage of number four traits of this stage of babyhood is that they are easily spoiled tendency to be easily spoiled babies can get easily spoiled in certain things if care is not taken if you look at first Corinthians chapter 3 verse 1 to 23 you will see how this Corinthian church demonstrated this spoiled and corrupted truth they got easily corrupted and easily spoiled and that is why babies need to subject themselves to proper oversight spiritual babies cannot eat more than milk milk feeding is another trait of this stage babies feed principally on milk and cannot digest strong food that is first corinthians chapter 3 verse 20 he said you have no need of food but milk because you are still babes in christ hebrews chapter 5 verse 12 to 4 made us to understand that some teachings are for the matured those who by the reason of use and practice have exercised themselves to discern between good and evil is that solid food is for the mature that's what hebrews 5 says those that by the reason of use have exercised their senses but meek is for babes praise the lord as much as babyhood is a necessary stage for everyone it should not be overstayed that is my emphasis this morning nobody should overstay babyhood when spiritual babies fail to grow they become carnal and worldly as was the case of many in the corinthian church they are in christ and they have been in christ for a long time but they've not grown they become carnal what does it mean to be carnal 
to see spiritual things from carnal perspective to analyze spiritual things with carnal approach to look at the things of Christ in the ways of the world let's go to 1st Corinthians chapter 3 verse 3 to 4 let me that be the first scripture I'm reading and indeed many people demonstrate this trait in the church today they are babies by the way they have a view of the things of God he said that is because you are still worried I'm reading from verse 3 as long as there is jealousy quarreling among you you are worldly and living by human standard are you not for when Paul says I follow Paul another says I follow Apollos you are following your own human nature are you not so as long as there is envy as long as there is jealousy as long as you continue to look at things from the lens and from the experience you have gathered in the world and know what is in Christ, he said, You are carnal. So, when there is an instruction from scriptures, we begin to analyze this from our experience rather than subjecting and submitting ourselves to the superior knowledge of the word of God. Say, As for me, oh, this is how it is done, but not knowing that scripture is superior to human experience. Let me say this no one should use human judgment to analyze the word of god you cannot subject the word of god to your human judgment but rather you allow the word of god to judge your human judgment so you are kana a baby is a kana christian a kana believer forget the title they carry and I said it two weeks ago. I said the problem of the church of God today, generally, is that there are many babies behind pulpits. People that have called themselves pastors, apostles, and prophets. I don't know whether I should cite this example. But there was a case of certain persons I read on the internet during the week that a man of God helped. And he sent him abroad. And this person, these individuals, when they got overseas, resources ran out in the pocket of the man of God, and they felt they were abandoned, you know, overseas, and they had to survive. So, at some point in time, information got leaked out by one of them that they have been abandoned abroad. And when the man of God heard it, he started cursing them. When I heard the curse, I said, "Kai," he cursed them publicly. The, my focus is not on the people and the misbehavior of the people my focus is on the person that ought to represent god out of bitterness out of anger started raining costs on small children and for me that speaks to a level of maturity that is expected that is not seen though he recanted and embraced them but for me that was an expression of immaturity behind pulpit that was I said the problem of the church today is that there are many immature people representing God behind pulpits and even among our ranks here and that is why demand is now placed on us to grow spiritually so that we don't become an embarrassment to the name we represent are you following me this morning An overage baby is an embarrassment to his family. When a 15 year old poo on him or herself outside, is it not an embarrassment? It's an embarrassment. In the light of this scripture we have read, are you growing spiritually? Or are you staying in babyhood? Are you overstaying in babyhood? What worldly trait do you still manifest? Let's be sincere with ourselves. I said the objective of this teaching is not aimed at any individual, but it's for us to evolve as a people because the Bible says that the earnest expectation of creation is waiting for the manifestations of who? The sons of God, not child of God, not babies of God. People that have matured into sonship. You cannot manifest God to the world if you don't become a son. And I read it to you last week in the book of Hebrews that a had hair 
remains but what in care of a steward until he matures and he cannot possess any inheritance that is left for him if you must be useful to God and usable in his hands you must mature say to yourself I must mature say to yourself I must mature so those are the traits and characteristics of babyhood and it is the responsibility of pastors to ensure that people are properly pastor in a good pasture so that they can grow babyhood but it's also contingent and dependent on the baby to open up to it i've decided that as a pastor i'm going to be force feeding many babies here in the church when a parent force feed a baby is it to harm the baby have you seen where a baby is being force fed before how do you force feed a baby <laughs> by force by fire <laughs> you must eat this food and you will see, will see some parents closing the nose of the baby Abby. if you say that is my approach now because by force by fire we must go out of what baby wood the second stage of spiritual growth is childhood. You can see that from Ephesians chapter 4 verse 14. It said that we henceforth be no more children. It is God's desire that we don't remain a child. It said we henceforth we no more become children. The time comes when a growing Christian knows there is no longer a baby in Christ. When I listed the qualities of babies for us, most of us say, I don't belong to this class. Abby, you have been saying that move quickly. This is not my rank. Yes. A point in time will come that you know you are no longer a baby. Even though it's not really, you can't really say you have matured. But you know that you have left shy these things behind. And the characteristics of babyhood, you have left behind. But the Bible actually speaks of another stage called the childhood stage, the children's stage, which is between babyhood and manhood. And vast majority of church folks are in this position. And that makes it very important for me to teach about this class of people. What are the characteristics of a child? What are the characteristics of people? that in this stage of their spiritual work number one is unsteadiness children can't concentrate on things for too long their attention span is quite short and their interest fluctuates rapidly inconsistency is characterized with them spiritual children can be very inconsistent they can be very high today and very low tomorrow they can be walking zealously today and a little offense will turn them off tomorrow they are quick to promise god so many things today and they're quick to forget and break their promises tomorrow they can also easily be carried away and be lured away on steadiness children can easily be blown away by any and every wind they are high today they are low tomorrow they are zealous today they are angry tomorrow they are not consistent you can't actually entrust something to them we and go to sleep that is why when you give babies children assignment at school can you count on them that they will do the assignment very very unsteady and unsteadiness affects different aspects of the lives of spiritual children this unsteadiness affects their prayer life many of us after a kind of service oh to jesus we will even cry we will soap and for three days we'll be walking like this at home every morning we will carry our bible and open for next two weeks after the three days abby daddy do it like this oh yakata that is a sign you cannot be consistent when you give them responsibility in church oh we are doing it now i've been seeing many spiritual children in the rank of the choir members hey we are doing it they're already frustrating the choir leader we are doing it we are doing it we we'll come today come for the others oh. children 
But when you are pastoring children, in fact, one of the things I told my wife lately, he said, well, we have many children in our church. I can only count few adults, so let's handle them like children. When, they are sh when I, my kids were playing yesterday at home, they were shouting up and hack. I said, sweetheart, you are trying. Is it what you cope with? You know, unsteadiness is associated with spiritual children. Their study of the word of God is affected. Everything around their life is affected by this unsteadiness. Number two, because of time, is curiosity. Children often want to know about everything that goes on around them, whether it concerns them or not. If you have ever had a child around you, the kind of question they ask you, I don't like watching film with my children. They'll be asking me questions as though we acted the film. And one who was watching film, one and daddy, I was like, was I there when they were acting it? They are curious. You see this in the question they ask. Spiritual children can be too inquisitive. Sometimes, under the guise of collecting prayer points, they need to learn not to know, they need to learn that not every knowledge is profitable. That they don't need have to meddle in many two of many affairs. Spiritual children grow in their learning of spiritual things without falling into the pit of unhealthy curiosity. Curiosity is good, it's a trait, it's what you need to learn, you know, the things of the spirit. But we must know our boundaries. Spiritual children are always busy bodies. They are the ones that will come to pastor and try to point everything to the attention of the pastor. Not knowing that the pastor knows. But because he's not reacting, they think he does not see. And they are the ones that will come to pastor and report everybody. Have you seen this person? Have you seen this person? Have you seen this person? The only person they will not report is who? Themselves. I have plenty of children, so I, I'm talking from practical experience. One person will report the three of them. And when you go to the person they are reporting, you say, he's actually the one that started the whole thing. Curiosity. Number two is talkativeness. Number three. Another characteristic of babies is talkativeness. Science of spiritual maturity is the ability to breathe through our tongue. James chapter 3 verse 2. Know what to say, when to say it, and how to say it. Children don't know when to apply the break and they have not learned the value of silence. Spiritual children often sin with loose tongues. Proverbs chapter 10 verse 19. Talkativeness. And talkativeness is associated with a whole lot of evil. Let me give you four evils of talkativeness. Number one is evil speaking. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 13. They gossip about fault and failures of others. Statosin. Let us pray for Pastor Paul. Lo. That Pastor Paul, eh? Kai, kai, kai. You saw where I saw him yesterday. He was holding the hands and he's a married man. He was holding the hands of Sister Grace. Evil speaking. They often wonder if those with fault are Christians at all. They may carry tales around in the church and pass judgment, forgetting they do not have all the facts. This is all because they have not grown or they have just grown a little themselves. Number two is vain speaking. Second Corinthians chapter 10, verse 12 and verse 7 to 18. They boast about themselves. Spiritual children will boast about everything, including their church, their gifts, their talent, their achievements, how they are better than others, and they give glory to self. Vain speaking. They are the one that will come to you and say, Pastor Soji, <laughs> I've been on 14 days prayer and fasting now. All these are church members, we don't pray at all. Kasho kasi daddy dada. If the church is not praying, come and be praying all night in church for the church. 
They boast in their achievement. They boast in a spiritual baby is one that will see revelation from Bible. They are studying this morning, though. This revelation. Ah, daddy. If you saw what I saw in scripture today, our pastor had not even seen that before. God gave me a special insight into First Corinthians chapter 2. Or oh, when pastor is preaching, I already saw it. Vain speaking. Number three, foolish talking. Irrelevant jesting. Ephesians 4, chapter 5, chapter 4. Jokes that are not convenient. Many Christians leak through their mouths and they don't know. It was many years ago. God, you know, punctured me with this. I think it was around 2008 or so. I was walking around Gunikman at that time. And you say, my son, you are leaking. Ah. I thought, who is talking to me? He said, you are leaking. I said, how am I leaking? He said, you are leaking from your mouth. Many of us are leaking. Our problem, in fact, the problem we are having in our lives is as a result of the leakage of our tongue. Things that are not mature for exposure. Abby, process that God is taking us through it has become an headline in newspaper. That's why we struggle. Spiritual children, Proverbs chapter ten, verse nineteen. This often comes in a, when the tongue is not restrained. It's also the reason why spiritual children cannot keep secret and they breach confidence. They exaggerate, they lie. You cannot entrust them with secrets. Everything that you expose to them, you will hear from a third party. It's a trait of spiritual children. And number four, characteristics of a spiritual children, of a spiritual child, is activity. They are full of activities and they are restless. Children are often full of energy and can be very restless. Jumping from one activity to another. Spiritual children are similar and can run all over the place with Christian activity. But with maturity comes balance and clear understanding of what is really beneficial and what God wants them to do by time. Spiritual children are zealous without knowledge. They manifest excessive zeal, but yet with no proper direction or with no aim. And when you see them, they always want to jamboree. Just let's do programs without purpose. Number five is playfulness. Children are often playful. And that is why they are the ones that will want comedians to come and stay in front of the altar to entertain them on a Sunday morning. They are the one that wants to bese, bese, bese. Abby, on the consecrated service. They are always playful. One thing that is characterized or can be associated with a child is fun, Abby. They want to have fun. So if your drive to a church is for fun, oh, the church was tight today. It was funful and fun fear. You are just a child. I'm not saying that we should not have fun because we are different stages. But for the mature, fun is not the primary objective of worship. And the last point under this stage is misuse of liberty. A child will always misuse liberty. Children are apt to misuse the liberty they are given. A balanced use of Christian liberty requires maturity. When you give a spiritual child, someone in this stage, authority, they will always misuse it. When you give them privilege, they will always abuse it. When you give them access, they will always abuse it. They misuse liberty. They may have issues with many things. But because they don't know how to control themselves. When spiritual children fail to grow, it becomes difficult for the Lord to use them as we want to use them. 
This means that children who refuse to grow may never fulfill their destiny in God. And this is also sorrowful. When we refuse to grow into, you know, um, adulthood as believers. Let me say this before I move into the manhood stage. I will begin to close for today. I said it before last week that growth is in process are in stages and growth takes time that you determine yourself spiritual growth takes time that what the length of that time is determined by the person you can be born again today and in three years grow to full maturity it's possible so when we are talking about growth, I'm not talking about okay, I must be a Christian for 15, 20 years before I can say I'm mature. No. The level and the rate at which you grow is a function of how deep your hunger is. And the deeper your hunger, the faster your growth. Misuse of liberty. Entertainment will misuse it. And when I see some church folks, they come to church and they lead proper worship. And you see them elsewhere and they are whining as though they have serpentine spirit. You know that there is a problem. They still want to, something in them is still whining to the layers of this world. How will it be for you to see me outside this stupid and somewhere dancing galala? Will you be proud of me? Eh? You see me outside as your pastor. Tazi Galala. Will you want to identify or point to your friend that this is my pastor? You will not. So, carnality is an embarrassment to our identity. Carnality is what? An embarrassment to our identity. When you refuse to go out of carnality, you remain embarrassed, an embarrassment to your own self. As a child of God. Manhood stage. That is adulthood. This is the mature stage of every Christian. It is the stage that the Lord eagerly expects individuals and the church as a whole to reach. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 13. Said till we all come into the unity of faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. The mature Christian is so that have left babyish traits of overdependence, ignorance, and meek feeding. He has also put behind him the childhood tendencies of unsteadiness, unhealthy curiosity, talkativeness, and etc. The mature Christian is characterized by the following traits. Number one, a mature Christian has revelation and understanding, has grown in revelation and understanding. Revelation is one thing. Understanding revelation is another thing. Revelation speaks about insight. Understanding speaks about foresight, application of that revelation. Number two, a mature Christian is truly spiritual. True spirituality can be found as a characteristic of a mature Christian. They, they, est, they esteem lightly the things of the world and are more minded of the is because it is it has spiritual significance. Paul said it this way: he said, all things may be lawful for me, but not all things are what expedient that is beneficial a spiritual a mature believer look at the spiritual component of every decision he wants to take so he doesn't look at convenience he doesn't look at profits he doesn't look at gain he looks at the spirit and many people we interpret his action or action as he doesn't know what he's doing or he just is kind of person. No. He look at things from a spiritual standpoint. 
even if we put even if it's going to put him in a position of disadvantage he doesn't mind number two number three a mature believer is one that is dead to the praise and censorship of others they don't do things for show that's why when you see a lot of people in ministry today it's for show and when they post on social media and they don't have lives their mood changes when there is no comments you are not their friends anymore they have moved swing by human censorship the day the minister here and nobody says your message was powerful they will be sad for 24 hours they are dead and nothing of their will can hinder God's work first Corinthians chapter 4 verse 3 to 4 and James chapter 4 verse 4 because of time read it at home and Galatians chapter 1 verse 10 number four a matured man is able to make sound and balanced spiritual judgment and take decisions according to God's will first Corinthians chapter 2 verse 15 is able to make sound and balance judgment and take decisions according to God's will also is able to endure the strong meat of the word of God because his spiritual senses are trained to design good and evil Hebrews chapter 5 verse 14 a spiritual man is able to take strong meat this is how you know you are growing how do you undo rebuke that comes from the word of God when you are rebuked according to the standard of scripture how do you undo it that speaks to where you are in the growth process do you see the person that God is using to correct you as an enemy or adjust a mere channel through which God is correcting you? many people have been angry with me because I spoke the word of God to them I said no by the word of God this is wrong and I became their enemy that speaks to the stage of their growth You are not able to endure hardness. You are not able to undo discipline. When a spiritual matured man is disciplined, he counts his all joy. There is an opportunity for me to strengthen my feet in the Lord. But when you rebuke a baby, you become a temporary enemy for that time. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. A spiritually matured man knows how to deal with self and how to be dead to self Galatians chapter 2 verse 20 you know how to undo yourself you know how to kill the flesh you know how to undo the flesh Galatians chapter 5 verse 24 Colossians chapter 3 also from verse 5 you know how to put to death yourself because you have matured. A matured man also know how to walk in love toward others, irrespective of what they do. This is an acid test for maturity. I posted something on the church page, you know, during the week, and I read a lot of reactions. And I laughed, I smiled. It speaks to where we are in our level of growth, the way we have responded. It says he's able to walk in love towards others irrespective of what they do. And this is the major text of maturity, your love work. Can somebody read Colossians chapter 3 verse 14 for me? Colossians 3 verse 14, who is there? The way you react to injuries speaks about your level of maturity. Yes? Above all things, put on charity, yes? 
which is a bond of perfection. If you will be considered a perfect man with regards to spiritual maturity, the acid test is your love, love work. Love work. Walking in love does not mean you are foolish. Walking in love doesn't mean you are senseless or you are reckless. It simply means that you have a higher view, a higher perspective of life according to the word of God that others don't have. It doesn't mean you are wasteful. The word or a kind of believer might look it from that perspective. It doesn't mean you are extravagant or you don't have need for your own resources. It simply means that you have a higher view of things that is not carnal, not temporal. You know a man that is matured in Stephen when he was being stoned to death and was yet interceding in pain for those that are stoning him. What did he say? He said, Father, forgive them for they know what now we are doing. He's looking at those people not as enemies but as victims themselves. There is a difference when you mature you will see people that are doing you evil as victims not as enemies because if they know what they are doing and if they know their hand and the one that is using them to do what they are doing they will know that they are victims in fact they are more a victim than you the acid test of maturity is love and love is long suffering, Abby, because it's of love. Love for peers. Love is not easily angered. It's not easily provoked. It doesn't keep record of wrongs. Those are things that carnally a natural man cannot do. A natural man is expected to remember the wrong that was done by the same person yesterday when he's asking for favor today. You are asking me for favor today. A carnal man will put before you what you did yesterday. They don't see ground. They don't see merit for new approach of mercy. But as believers, I told us in church on, on Friday, we are a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. If you understand who you are, you will not function according to the order of your human nature. You will not. Your love work. How calm you can be under provocation. How choice your world will become when you are hungry. How generous you continue to be when you know and you think you have been taken advantage of. How mature you undo issues when you are under pressure. How you can defy action until the appropriate time. That's maturity. You know that this is wrong. But you know that this is not also the right thing to approach the wrong thing. That is maturity. It's not as if you are weak when you don't take action when you see something wrong. It's just that you are waiting for the best time that your action will not be misinterpreted and will achieve the same results. That's maturity. There are many times, there are many things I want to engage some certain persons that at times I wait two months, three months, four months until time is right and when the action is not communicated and you tell the person that this I've been trying to tell you for six months they will appreciate it more that is maturity it's only a child that heart on impulse impulse it happens now I want to action now no, it's only a baby that does that a mature person you know regulate his own or her own impulse and acts at the appropriate time even when there is knowledge A mature man is a man of faith. Faith is another characteristic of maturity. Trusting God as the outcome of personal work with Him. Your faith level speaks of your maturity. How you are able to wait upon the Lord and wait for the Lord when there is need without having to bring up or bring up your own ways to meet your own needs. Faith speaks about absolute trust and confidence in God to do things that we believe he will do in our lives. That's maturity. Faith.
A mature man is able to handle delicate spiritual matters without causing damage or ruin. You are able to handle delicate spiritual matters without causing more damage or ruin. The objective of everyone that wants to repair something is to get the things better and not to get it worse, Abby. This speaker is faulty, Pastor Paul. Is it armor and cheese you will think you will use to lose it? What will you use to lose the speaker? Eh? The right tools, which is screwdriver. Somebody that is looking at you just turning something that does not know what you are doing, will it make sense to them? What do you want to remove? I want to remove the speaker. And you are saying chisel and hammer. You are now knocking the thing. When you finish knocking the thing and remove the speaker, when you want to fix it back, will you be able to fix it back properly? No. So ability to handle delicate issues is maturity. Without destroying it. It's not everything you hit with armor. Are you understand what I'm saying? There are some surface that requires drilling. And drilling takes process. But most of the time, bah! No. In fact, contemporary furnitures now, they use less of hammer. Are you understand what I'm saying? If you see correct furnitures now, they have to do it on fire more. What do they do? Machine. Boom. Before they finish coupling everything, they have grown in their experience of adding matters. As I round up this morning, let me give you two more points. All fruit of the Spirit is matured in Him and are not bitter or sour. In a matured man, you will find all fruit of the Spirit. You know a mature Christian by the way he talks. You know a mature Christian by the way he demonstrates wisdom. You know a mature Christian by his words. They are filled with grace and wisdom. Like I said before, maturity does not necessarily come as a result of donkey years in the Lord. Maturity comes as a result of faithful obedience and following the Lord even in little, little matters of daily lives. Hence, a baby in the Lord today can reach maturity within a short time. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Therefore, exercise as spiritual things and you know spiritual engagement will help you to grow maturely. Maturity is the only beginning of a deep personal and faithful and reaching fruitful work with the Lord. Hence, there is need for mature Christian to press on. This is a rule for growth in maturity. I will close this morning by reading Philippians chapter 3 verse 12 to 16. Philippians chapter 3 verse 12 to 15 and I will quickly give us why we don't go as fast as we should. And I will close in about 5 to 10 minutes. Who is there? Yes, Philippians 3 verse 12 to 16. He said, know that I've already attained. Yes. I press on. That I may lay hold. On that which for which Christ Jesus has laid hold of me. Yes. Brethren. I do not count myself to have apprehended. One thing I do. Forgetting things which are behind. And reaching forward to those who are ahead. Praise the Lord. He said, I continue to press forward, to press on. Every day, we should get better and get improved. Praise the Lord. Why do we not grow as we should as believers? Quickly, I will just read through what I have in my note and I will close. Number one is disobedience, which is a result of unbelief. Disobedience will stunt your growth. Every point and every time you disobey God, is it's like a child repeating class. You cannot jump class in the curriculum of God. You must master a class before you move to the next level. Disobedience cuts short, cut short your journey and makes you to repeat and to spit and to recycle on the spot. Number two is anxiety and cares. Anxiety and cares attacks your faith life directly. 
and it will not allow you to grow. So when you are full of anxiety and care, there's no way you can be matured in the faith. Number three is poor nourishment or poor nutrition. Inadequate feeding on the word of God. Neglect and negligence will bring about an imbalanced feeding. So when you are poorly manor when you are poorly nourished, you cannot grow uh, in the Lord and you cannot grow to maturity. Spiritual complacency, lack of desire for spiritual growth, is another you know uh, 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 indicator that will affect your growth. Complacency. And number four is indiscipline. Failure to pay the price for spiritual growth, you know, is another thing that um, affects a growth. A, an undisciplined spiritual individual cannot grow spiritually. It takes discipline to wake up consistently every day at a specific time to pray and to study the Word of God. It takes discipline to come for service regularly. You know, coming to church should not be based on whether you feel like coming or you don't feel like coming. It should not be based on your mood swing. It takes discipline to follow God. And if you cannot be disciplined to be consistent, where you'll be fed the word of God, you cannot grow. Reluctance to leave behind shy things. Some of us, we like to remain what we are. We refuse to grow because we are stubborn in relinquishing and you releasing childish behaviors and shyly attitude. We don't just want to leave it. We are okay with ourselves and we are enjoying it to our own ruin and destruction. Pride is another thing that hinders growth. Inability for you to learn from others is a function of pride. Not seeing anything wrong with yourself and seeing everything wrong with everybody is a function of pride. Not be willing to sit down under leadership and learn new things is a function of pride. Pride we always in uh, uh, affect affect growth. God will help us in Jesus' name. And second to the last point is the fear of men. Fear of men. Many of us have not been able to grow because we fear men more than God. Fear of men we in that growth, including the fear of yourself. Many of us, the man we are fearing is not others, is ourselves. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. And last thing is inordinate affection which i call ambition of this world many of us love the world paul was speaking concerning demas he said demas has forsaken me because he loved this world more than uh, the things of the kingdom the love of the world has not allowed many of us to grow and has become the tongue that shocks you know our affection shows our fire shocks everything that um, we need to um, have, um, you know, uh, engage to stimulate spiritual growth. God will help us in the name of Jesus. Last week, uh, next week, I'll be speaking to the fact of how we should grow. How do we know we are growing and how practically can we grow? The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Can you bow down your heads as you begin to talk to God this morning? One thing I want you to pray about, basically, is just express your desire to grow. Say, Father, I want to grow. Sincerely speaking, it is frustration to lead a people that are not growing. And even, even yourself, where you will be frustrated with your own life, if, desti if your destiny is God, you cannot, you cannot advance in God um, if, you are grow if you are not growing. You cannot. Your Christian experience will be a frustration. Your Christian experience will be difficult. Your Christian experience will be a shadow of itself if you do not grow. Express your desire to grow. Lord, Father, I want to grow. That should be your prayer. Help me to grow. Help me to grow. In the name of Jesus, help me to grow. I want to grow in faith, in love, in work. Help me to be humble to learn. Help me not to see myself to have attained. Even Paul said, not have attained. Any man that sees that he has come to the peak of attainment, we stop growing. Say, Lord, help me. Whatever I know, I drop now. Whatever I assume as knowledge, I drop now. Whatever it is that has inflated my perspective, my sight, not to see the need to grow further. Whatever that is bringing on due familiarity that, has in, that is hindering my growth, help me, help me, help me. Give me the art to learn. Give me the art to learn again. In the name of Jesus, help me, help me. 
Help me. Help me. If you are a genuine child of God and you have the Spirit of God, I'm sure you'll be praying right now. And if you have the Spirit of God, I'm sure this message will make sense to you. But if it does not make sense to you, then you are not of God. You don't have the Spirit of God. If this message has angered you, you are not of God. You don't have the Spirit of God. The Bible says that the deep call it unto the deep. If by the depth of what you have heard, your spirit is resonating with something called desire to press more into God, then you are the child of God. You are among those that God has sent this word. And this word will deliver and liberate you and bring you to full measure of the stature of Christ. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Father, Lord, I pray for your people this morning. That each and every one to whom we have sent your word, we find it, O Lord God, suitable to add as a virtue that will nourish their growth. In the name of Jesus. What they need to hear, O Lord God, that they have heard. I ask by your spirit we amplify and multiply for their benefit and for their nourishing. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.